Okay, we've got to have a conversation about one Jack Grealish. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. Yes, today's video is going to centre around this man right here in Jack Grealish of Manchester City. The big news, of course, in Jack's life recently has been the fact that he was axed from the England side. He will not be participating in the European Championships that are coming up this summer after being left out by Gareth Southgate of England's squad to take on the Euros in Germany this summer. And it's led a lot of people to be a little bit surprised by maybe his exclusion from the squad. And it's according to question what maybe comes next for Grealish. A lot was obviously made about the former Aston Villa player when, of course, he made that huge mega money move to Manchester City. We thought that was going to be the evolution of Jack Grealish playing under Pep Guardiola, evolving his game and taking his game to the next level. But it hasn't quite worked out at Manchester City the way that a lot of us had thought it would and a lot of others would have thought uh, and hoped it would have. We're going to be talking about Grealish, we're going to be talking about everything to do with the Manchester City and England playmaker. But before we go any further, I would like to remind you all to please like the video and also subscribe if you're new. Both things are always a fair be greatly appreciated. Get involved in the comment section, let me know your thoughts, your comments, opinions, predictions, feelings. Whatever you want to talk about with Jack Grealish in this video, I'm sure along with it interesting and great reading down below. So please do get involved down there. But without further ado, let's get on with the video. Let's talk Jack Grealish and everything else surrounding the, I want to say, 28-year-old. 28-year-old? Yes, 28-year-old. A couple of years ago, two or three years ago, this guy was one of the most sought of, most highly rated, and most exciting talents in not just English football, but European and world football. This guy was being heavily raved about, highly talked about, highly sought of. And of course, that's what saw him get his mega money move to Manchester City. Hundred million pounds. We remember we were all there. We were all talking about it. We all remember how incredible that mega money move was. And of course, at that time as well, it wasn't just the Premier League. He was lighting up with Aston Villa at the time. But of course, it was obviously England as well. He was obviously a um, a highly thought of member of the England setup. He broke into that England setup. There was a lot of talk and buzz surrounding his name about he was going to be the catalyst of excitement in that England squad. He was going to be the, the playmaker, the creative outlet and everything else in between. And everybody was talking about Jack Grealish. But over the past few years or so, the hype's died down a little and the excitement isn't at the height that it was when he was at Aston Villa. Don't get me wrong, he's had a fantastic career. Three Premier League titles on the bounce with Manchester City, including obviously that time an FA Cup winner, a Champions League winner, treble winner, numerous accolades and accomplishments that many footballers and even wannabe footballers dream of achieving, this guy has obviously managed to achieve in Manchester City. To say his £100 million move has been a flop would not exactly be completely true because of obviously the, the titles he has won. But I wouldn't say he's been an integral part or a vital part of that run. I wouldn't say he has been a key component in the Pep Guardiola machine that has been Manchester City these past few years to the point where I would say if you take him out, they probably don't win them. He's contributed, yes. But is it a vital contribution? Is it a key contribution? I'd argue not. It's not been a complete failure of a £100 million move. He's got exactly what he wanted out of it. And they've got a player that they've had for the past few years. But why has the hype died down? Why has the excitement died down? Why has this guy, who was one of the most 
extremely exciting talents in the game. Somewhat, not flopped, but somewhat, what's the word I'm looking for here? Somewhat floundered a little bit. Floundered? Is that the right word? Is that even a word? Floundered. Somewhat stop started. It's not the word I'm going for, but it's the one I'm going with. Why has that been? Why has it all led up to this moment now where even Gareth Southgate is excluding him from England squads that are being taken to major tournaments? For me, it's very simple. And it goes back to what I asked and uh, what I asked when he moved from Aston Villa to Manchester City. Would he flourish being a smaller fish in a bigger pond? When you look at his time at Aston Villa, he was obviously the big fish in a small pond. And he flourished. He was given a free role in which he could do whatever he liked. He was allowed to be the kid on the playground. That kind of phrasing where he'd just go after the ball and he'd get on the ball and he could do whatever he wanted with it. Whether it be take a, take a long shot, dribble past several players, um, create space and opportunities for others that are for other teammates and things of that nature. He's not been allowed to do that at Manchester City. And I said this when he moved. Pep Guardiola is going to want to micromanage his game. Pep Guardiola is going to want to restrict Jack Grealish to a point where he's not probably going to be as free-spirited as what he would be at Aston Villa. But that micromanagement could take his game to the next level. We haven't necessarily seen that. And it's kind of it's kind of been telling in his goals in his goal contributions. For Manchester City, he's played 125 times across three years. He has scored 14 goals and assisted 18 times. 32 contribu- goal contributions in 125 appearances. For a £100 million player, and I'll be honest with you, I cannot think off the top of my head of a single standout goal contribution out of those 32 in those 125 appearances. I just can't. I, I really, really can't. Like... Maybe there is one that's blatantly obvious that I can't think of, and maybe City fans will obviously know more because obviously they're watching more week in week out more than say I do as a as an out, as a little bit of an outsider as a Liverpool fan as a rival fan. But I can't remember a standout moment in those goal contributions. I I really really can't. It's it. it it's, it's, it's racking my brain and I can't I, I, I genuinely can't think of one the goal contributions have died down a little bit the excitement levels died down a little bit and you know even when you look at his stats season by season it's not like he's had a standout season I think he got something like um, seven goals last season He's got um, three in the league this season. I think he got three in his first season as well. I think the rest have come in all other competitions. It's it's strange to me that no one's necessarily talking about this a bit more than what they should. Like I say, don't get me wrong. His resume is going to look incredible at the end of the season, at the end of his career. Premier League winners medals, FA Cup winners medal, Champions League medal. It's gonna look amazing. But being the smaller fish in a bigger pond, having Pep Guardiola micromanage your game to restrict you from being the guy that everybody gave the ball to and just let them run free with it. To the guy who's now got to you know, that's now got to um, watch where he goes. He's got to think about his positioning. He's got to hold a certain position. He's got to hold a certain space. He's got to occupy certain defenders. He's got to uh, wait for the ball to come to him, that kind of thing, rather than go and search the ball. 
all of that kind of stuff, it's just not necessarily what we've associated Jack Grealish with when, of course, he was making a name for himself at Aston Villa. And like I say, it, it's now got to a point where this has now led him to be axed from the England squad. A lot of a lot of people were surprised by that. A lot of people were surprised by that. And I can understand why, because he offers something that not a lot of England English players do, uh, uh, possess. He is good with the ball at his feet. He draws fouls. He's got great technical ability. Decent shot on him as well. Good skill, flair, technical ability, like I say. He's got a lot of those playmaking stats alongside, obviously, his vision and creativity. But he hasn't shown it on a recent, on a consistent enough basis with Manchester City. And a lot of people are mentioning the fact that he's been injured. I actually checked back on his injury record. He's only missed um, about a month, just over a month. Of this past season alone, according to transfer mark, that is, he's only missed around about a month of games, six games in total for Manchester City between August and September, the end of August and the end of September. He's missed six games. The rest of them games that he's missed has been due to being on the bench or being a victim of the age old game of Pep Roulette, in which he just mixes his team around and obviously just rotates as necessary as Pep Guardiola's thinking. So it's not necessarily down to injury. But he's not grasped the, he hasn't grasped things by the by both hands. He's not done what Phil Foden's done this season, which is grasp games by both hands and win games on his own pretty much for Manchester City. He's not an Erling Haaland where he only needs one chance and that's all he needs and he's going to take it. He's not a Kevin De Bruyne who is going to be that consistent playmaking, uh, uh, play, playmaking talent game in, game out. He's just there for, for some games. He's just there and I think Guardiola's grown tired of it. And I have to question now, what may the future hold for Jack Grealish? Will, will his axe from the England side maybe be a wake-up call that maybe he needs to book up his ideas a little bit? Maybe he needs to maybe find that next level with Pep Guardiola. Or maybe he needs to leave Manchester City. Because £100 million, pounds, insane amount of money, insane transfer. But maybe this guy is better off being the big fish in a small pond. Maybe him going back to, with all due respect, I know Aston Villa have had a phenomenal season under Unai Emery. But let's just say, for argument's sake, he goes back to an Aston Villa. I know things are a little bit different now under Unai Emery. Different way of playing, it might not be the same. But you get the whole big fish in a smaller pond argument, surely. That maybe that may be how we find and rediscover Jack Grealish's form because certain players are just not cut out for certain managers, certain systems, certain clubs. And maybe we are looking at Grealish not being cut out for a Pep Guardiola system. And again, it goes back to the video that I made when he moved and I questioned whether or not the micromanagement of Pep Guardiola would help or restrict Jack Grealish's overall game. And whether Jack Grealish himself would be able to adapt to Guardiola's game. Or whether he would flop. It's not completely been a flop. Don't twist my words or anything like that. I don't want it, I don't want this to be like, oh I say he's a flop. He's not a flop. He's of course a fantastic player. He's of course a brilliant player. But maybe not for this system. Maybe not for Guardiola. He's had three years now under Guardiola to, 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 to hit the ground running and to really be an integral part of a team for the money you've spent on him. And I can't say that he is. 
some Guardiola signings, I admit, do take so, um, do take longer than others. Very rare you're going to get an Erling Haaland that's going to break goal scoring records right off the bat. Sometimes they're like a Rodri. It takes them like a season or two to really bed into the system, really understand and grasp the get uh, the game that Guardiola's trying to implement on you, and then you start to kick on from there. For Grealish, he's already Premier League proven. But for the Guardiola system, he's had three years to bed into it. He's had three years to buy into it. He's had three years to adapt into it. And he's not there. He's not there. And that's why I wonder whether or not being a smaller fish in a bigger pond is has obviously affected him in a negative way. And that's what's obviously led to his decline in recent years. That's what's led to the lack of hype about him in recent years. The lack of excitement about him in recent years. And probably why Gareth Southgate saw fit to axe him from the overall squad uh, this uh, for, for the upcoming European Championships. I think there's a big decision to be made on Grealish by both the club and maybe Grealish himself. One that I'm very much intrigued by. I know there has been rumoured interest from Bayern Munich on this. So watch this space on Jack Grealish this summer. But I think it is certainly something to keep your eye on going forward. Especially with what's happened in the past couple of days. In terms of him being axed from the England side for the upcoming Euros. But these are just the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, feelings. Whatever I want to call it of this guy. I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of this whole Jack Grealish situation? What do you make of his move to Manchester City and how has that run progressed or uh, not progressed in your eyes maybe over the pa over the course of the past few years or so? Uh, let me know all about your thoughts, your comments, opinions, predictions, feelings, whatever you want to call it on Jack Grealish down below in the comment section. I'm sure it'll be great to hear from you all. I'm sure you'll have a lot of interesting things to say about him down below. Otherwise, hit the like button on the way out. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new and want to see more content like this. Both things are always greatly appreciated and as always thank you all so much for watching and listening i've been fletch this has been another fletch talks video and i will soon speak to you all again soon in another video or live stream or whatever it may be cheers guys thanks everyone for watching take care enjoy the rest of your night speak to you all again very very soon